big fan of this man's work for many, many years. And then at the uh, Big Slick charity tournament that I keep mentioning to you two, Chris, is over there uh, in Kansas City. I uh, got to spend uh, a late night in a gas station with this man and uh, liked him even more. We survived that experience. <laughs> Johnny Knoxville here on The Rich Eisen Show. Good to see you, Johnny. Good to see you. Thanks. <laughs> you bet. This Being Evil documentary, sir, yeah. is big-time fun because it just recalls a time that doesn't exist anymore in our society in terms of uh, people jumping over stuff and cars with the exception of, in a way, you and the X Games stuff that we're seeing out here now. And you, you draw a line between evil can evil and those things in this documentary. And I, I, it's a lot of fun revisiting the pop culture time as well, John. Well, yeah, it's, it's the documentary, there is a lot of fun about it. But it's not all fun. We, we're, mm -hmm. we, we celebrate what needs to be celebrated about evil and all that he inspired. And we're also very honest about who he was as a person. Right. And some of that's not all great. And it's tough because I idolized him growing up and I still love him. Uh, and people are still going for it like that, but I don't believe they would have, they would be doing that if it wasn't for evil. Like, uh, mm -hmm. there wouldn't be a jackass without evil. Uh, I don't think, uh, if their X Games did exist, I don't think it would look the same. Because they're really elite, uh, sportsmen and women, but mm -hmm. there's the daredevil aspect that wasn't there before evil. Uh, he he elevated everything and inspired everything. Yeah, I mean, of, of the many people that, that this documentary sits down and has to tell the story of Evil Knievel, including you, and I mentioned Frank Gifford, one. Tony Hawk sits down as well. Mm -hmm. And it seems like you and him growing up in your various uh, home lives as kids were idolizing the same guy. Yeah, I mean, Travis Pastrana is, he, 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 he loves evil. And Robbie Madison, mm -hmm. who just did that insane... Uh, stunt where he rode a, a, a gnarly wave on a motorcycle. Oh, I thought yeah. I saw a picture of it. I'm like, that's yeah, fake. Yeah, we, we showed that here on the show too. We thought it looked I, fake it too. Blew my, I was like, what? it had the uh, guts of Evil Knievel, but the creativity of Buster Keaton. <laughs> and, you know, Seth Inslow, there's a lot of people going for it today, but that, I think it all started with evil. Yeah, being evil, available in theaters, iTunes, and video on demand starting uh, today. Uh, Johnny Knoxville here in studio. And just the story of a kid in, growing up in Butte with sort tough of town. a tough town in Butte, Montana. And then he winds up selling insurance, doing well at that. He broke all the records. Actually. Yeah. And then decides, okay, I'm going to start one day. Uh, he, he, he gets involved with motorcycles and decides to start jumping cars. Are we and really going to gloss fire. over his insurance company? Uh, <laughs> Let's he go he more did break all the records. He sold like more in one week than most people sold in a year. But right. that week he was at selling them at a mental institution. That's right. That's so, right. but a record's a record, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah. So he went into the cuckoo's nest essentially and broke a, an insurance sales record. Yeah. And, and yeah. But he was like a P.T. Barnum-esque type of showman mm -hmm. and salesman. He was very sharp. I mean, just the Caesars clip alone, just to, to will that to happen, and, and especially the way he did it, mm -hmm. uh, he just confused them into thinking we're doing the event. Right, the fact that there would be a time where he could reach the actual CEO of Caesars on the phone and play different people calling him up, the CEO, about the same guy. He played different and parts And mispronouncing of his name mm -hmm. each time was like the real, like this guy's really sharp, because mm -hmm. that, is uh, just that extra level of smart. Well, the, the jump of the Caesar's Palace um, fountains, that's the most iconic, in a way, mm -hmm. of the pieces of video that we've seen. Wh which is of Evil Knievel's stunts, events, do you like the most? Do you talk about the most, Johnny? Well, you could have done a whole documentary on Evil just before he turned 20. He didn't start jumping until he was 25. Mm -hmm. But uh, about the Caesar's Palace, uh, we, there's so many things we couldn't put in the dock, like, you know, before he jumped Caesar's Palace, he puts his last hundred dollars on black on roulette, comes up a loser, uh, shot a wild turkey like he always did, and mm. walks outside to go do the jump, and Joe Lewis, ex-heavyweight champ Joe Lewis, is working the door at Caesar's, mm -hmm. and says, you know, kid, this might go better if you don't make it. And, uh... Joe Lewis tells him this. Yeah, which is... <laughs> I mean, talk about sharp. And that's the thing I love about this world is the, the cross-sections of pop culture, that Joe Lewis would happen to be working the door of Caesar's Palace the day that Evil Knievel on New Year's Eve decides to go ahead and jump this stuff after pulling off the scam of the century to sort of pull it off. 
It's incredible. And I mentioned this to you off camera also. John Derrick, the, the director, shot it. Yeah, and well, she, he shot the takeoff. Right. Uh, uh, Linda Evans shot the landing, so the bike was coming straight at her. So Linda Evans the, of Dynasty the fame. The Big Valley. Yeah, the Big Valley. Right. She was on the Big Valley? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. If not, I like saying no, that. No, don't look at the Chris <laughs> Command Center of, of oh, over there. They're, they're the lost. Yeah, I'm not yeah. going to, yeah. What is that? It's, what's not, the big it's not a college football conference. Yeah. It's not the Big Valley Conference. No. no they're That's not what playing they think. The they think no, they think yeah. like they made the NIT, the Big uh, Valley yeah. Conference. To, to your no. saying of like him being a salesman, after that jump, he was in the hospital for a few days, and the doc says uh, in the documentary, it says that he, you know, he was in a coma, and his wife's like, he wasn't in a coma, he faked it. They just put that out in reports to make it look like it, more daring, more, more than it was, and he was fine and he was there. He knew how to get publicity yeah. and generate buzz. It, like, I, one, one of the uh, top figures of the 20th century, uh, as far as showmen uh, and definitely daredevils, he's, at the lone, he's alone at the top of the mountain of daredevils. Right. Uh, so well, yeah, he was always pulling things like that. Where do you put yourself on that list, Johnny? Oh God, I, I'm I'm way uh, yeah. I'm well, not you know, even you're, on the mountain. No, I'm no, over here playing no, on a whole other mountain. I don't where know, it's man. Just, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I know yeah. you're being very humble. No. I mean, you're being very humble because so, you said Jackass would not have existed without Evil Knievel. You believe that? Yeah. Why do you yeah, say? Yeah, because I mean, my father, like the prank aspect, I'm sure that that was. My father pulled pranks on everyone constantly, so okay. that was firmly ingrained in my mind. But there had been all the superheroes before uh, Evil Knievel were animated or cartoons out of comic books, but he was a real live superhero, invented a whole sport and a whole way of thinking. That doesn't exist if there's no Evil Knievel. And thus, at some point... Yeah, I, yeah no, I, yeah, I'd probably be, you know, Working at a gas station or <laughs> doing time. No, love, listen, I, like I told you, I've been with you at a gas station at one in the morning. In yes. Ca in Kansas City. Yeah. And, you know. Marine to Marine. Yeah, well, two full grown men. Well, I got to be honest with you, though. Uh, if, if, if I was in the back of that cab with somebody else, I'd have been a little bit more concerned. To me. I did at one point say to you, are, are there cameras on us right now? I was wondering if there was something that was going on. Right, yeah. I, that's, that I, I understand, but uh, I, I don't prank people outside of uh, my guys. I, I've done that before, mm -hmm. and it just goes bad, tonally. Because <laughs> they get their feelings hurt, and then I don't know how. I feel terrible, so mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm just going to... Keep it at well, my you, guys. I, I appreciate you saying that, um, that you wouldn't uh, want to make me feel a, in a certain way, but it does take a certain amount of, well, I guess huevos is the word that's being used in the sports world right now as well, to do some of the stuff that you, that you did. Bad grandpa, for instance, in that regard, that you have to have some sort of disregard for, of your conscience to pull off what you're doing in a certain way. Would well, you agree with that, Johnny? Well, in, I mean, in stunts, Bad Grandpa was more pranks than stunts. Right. But you still have to really put yourself in situations which you don't, you, that you don't know how they're going to come out. And then in Bad Grandpa, I had an eight-year-old kid with me. Yes. Of course, that eight-year-old kid was mean as hell in the best way. <laughs> I don't mean that. I love him. He's just fearless. So I have to make yeah. sure that it doesn't get too out of control. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, but stunt-wise, you have to kind of throw away logic and just... You know, just go. The, oh, evil can evil and go. Let's just do it. Right. And did you uh, did you interview any of these subjects? I was wondering that while watching the documentary. No, Daniel Youngie interviewed all of them. Yeah. No yeah. kidding. He's an excellent Oscar. Excuse me, Oscar winning director I Daniel like Youngie. And did which one of the people that were in this documentary would you have wanted to interview that you've seen? I I mean there was. I I, I would have liked to have been there for everyone. Um, mm -hmm. Linda. Uh, Knievel was his ex-wife. Yeah, was a great subject. Yeah, uh, um, God, I don't know. I just George I'm, Hamilton. I'm in love. George yeah. Hamilton. Yeah. By the way, looks great. Looks great. Does he's he's vital to the doc as mm -hmm. well? This story when uh, he brought the script mm -hmm. for uh, the Evil Knievel movie that he was seventy one. Yeah, finest. you know that where he's like uh, Evil. I got this script. Uh, you know we're going to do, and mm -hmm. he was like, read it to me. He's like, I'm not going to read it to you. I can't tell it better, any better than George, but he ends up, uh, Evil pulls a gun and puts it to oh. his head and makes George read the script. And George read the script. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he read it. He said it was his best performance ever. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, by, by uh, dint of a gun. I've got Johnny Knoxville here uh, on The Rich Eisen Show. Let's take a 60-second break. When we come back more with Johnny. I want to talk a little boxing with you. Yes. Okay? Does that work for you? I love boxing. Okay, Johnny Knoxville, when we come back here on The Rich Eisen Show. He is at Real J Knoxville on Twitter. He is here in studio, Being Evil, released today on Video On Demand, iTunes, and in theaters, the documentary about Daredevil, Evil Knievel. Uh, we've got Johnny Knoxville here in studio. Has there ever been any stunt that you've said no to? Uh, yeah, under certain circumstances, like if it's cold weather or cold water, mm. I count me out. Really? I, I hate it. Huh. I think I have thin skin, or but I hate it. And, uh, and if anything weird is going on the set that day where something negative is going on, we'll postpone to another day if it's a stunt that could go bad forever. Because I don't want to be sidetracked or have anything like that happening if I'm getting ready to do something. Negative thoughts. Yeah. Negative ne someone energy. being negative or something just happened. Uh, you know, we were shooting in Jackass 3. This, we, s someone, we were doing this thing on a mountain and someone died on the ski slope uh, of that mountain that day. Someone else uh, totally unrelated to Unrelated to us. Unrelated. And uh, it, free it really weirded, it, it freaked everyone out. And so we postponed until another day. So is it a collective decision on the mojo? Or you just say, I'm feeling the bad mojo, and you, you, you stop? I think everyone, we're all on the same page. But if I'm doing the stunt, it's a collective decision. <laughs> 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 yeah. We collectively decide yeah, to sure. postpone. Right. So, is it, so cold water. That's, Hate it. No kidding. Yeah, anything with water or, yeah. Um, there was something that I can't. Swamp. Oh, I don't like crowds. I'm t I don't like be, I don't like crowds at all. So, so. Okay. Everyone, all the guys have irrational fears. Like you can put a, a fish hook in Steve-O's mouth. Yes. Chum up the waters and cast him out to sea <laughs> as shark bait and almost get his foot bit off like yeah. a jackass number two. Yeah. But do not ask him to bungee jump. <laughs> he lo and, and this guy jumps off bridges. He just jumped off the Hollywood uh, Reservoir the other day. It was uh -huh. like, a, I don't know, 100 uh, feet high. Yeah. And he's backflipped off of it. But don't ask him to bungee jump. He will lose his mind. That's his line in the set. Yeah. It's like, he's so far over that <laughs> line. <laughs> like grandmother's bungee jump. But right. Right. Huh. There's a reason we get good footage. Yeah, the, hey, look, <laughs> it's all gotta, it's all gotta work. You gotta get your mindset right. And and uh, Johnny Knoxville here uh, on the Rich Eisen show. Uh, boxing is your sport, right? If if I'm, if I had to ask you about any sport that you follow, would it, would it be that? Yeah, okay. a, a boxing and an MMA. Yeah, I mean, okay. I, I love baseball, but I just don't follow it as much. So, do you have a specific baseball team that when you did used to follow? Atlanta Braves, because it was either when I was growing up, it was the either Atlanta Braves or the Cincinnati Reds. Sure, that's all we got on the Superstation. So you, we we were watching the same things, either TBS, yeah. or Wide World of Sports. Yeah, that was we huge. Because I mean, that's what Evil Knievel was on. Uh, he was more thrill of victory sometimes than agony of defeat. Although <laughs> I think evil was a stunt. mixture of those things because his defeat was yeah, a victory. Right. So boxing, um, the Floyd Mayweather Pacquiao fight. Do you think what happened there merits a second fight between those two? God, I have John. so much feelings about that because I'd wanted it for so long, and God, I don't know. I I think if. Uh, if it was closer, I would be mm -hmm. wanting the fight again. But I know Pacquiao was injured. Uh, well, he said that afterwards. That, and then we were like, well, why didn't you say that before? Mm -hmm. And I think we all know because they wanted the payday. Yeah. But. God, I was so, I, I just wish, you know, uh, if, if it's on again, I'm going to watch it. Okay. You know? Sure. But, you know, when Sugar Ray Leonard uh, before he retired, he stepped up to fight Hagler. And I, I got, I, Floyd Mayweather has had an unbelievable career and is an amazing champion. Uh, I'd love to see him step up to fight Gennady Govlikin mm -hmm. uh, for his final bout, like Leonard fought Hagler. But uh, I don't, I don't, he, he's, I don't know about that next fight for Floyd. Who do you think is the best fighter you've ever seen? Who do you think? Oh. We've had Tyson sit in this chair. We've had uh, conversations about uh, Layla Ali was in this chair talking about obviously her dad, but what do you who do you think? You mean in my lifetime? Yeah, because that's... I think of all time, mm -hmm. I think you 
you got to go with uh, Sugar Ray Robinson. But in my lifetime, I, I don't know. That's tough. I, I, Ali or Leonard? One of the two. Mm. Would, would you take a punch from Mike Tyson? Uh, yeah, I would. Okay. It's, you know, it's, 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 it's not that big a deal to fight someone who can, is like 2,000% better than you because mm. they're going to knock you out in a second. Yeah. It gets tough fighting someone who's like 20% better than you. <laughs> And then they're just going to beat on you for so long. Right. Uh, so Tyson, I would be like, boom, I'm out. You're out. I'm done. Well, I'm just talking about a stunt. Just like you stand there. Uh, well, I fought Butterbean. Yeah, in a, in, in in a, a store. A, I think we went to Tyson, asked him first, but he, he didn't. I don't he think declined? He, back then, I think, I'm pretty sure back then he didn't want to do anything. Yeah, what about that Butterbean uh, uh, hit? What, how did that go down? Well, that's the no. kind of what I was talking about a second ago. People yeah. were like, well, that knockout punch must have really hurt. I'm like, no, I didn't even feel that. The punches before that hurt, but you get knocked out, you're out. <laughs> didn't you hit uh, a clothing rack? Like your head hit a clothing rack or something? Is that what it, it either hit the corner, which was a corner like this, oh and God. then the, 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 the hardwood floor had a thin <laughs> type of negligee type of carpet on it. <laughs> the negligee carpet. Fantastic. <laughs> what would, uh, I'm with Johnny Knoxville here uh, on The Rich Eisen Show. Uh, Ronda Rousey. Mm is as good as they get in in uh, in her endeavor where where uh, do you watch her fights you you yes. think you do so you, yes. e even though you know that they're probably going to last like 30 seconds well it's like watching tyson fights back in the day sure you know have your popcorn in your lap mm -hmm. as soon as they ring the bell because you're not going to have a chance to go get it right so i think the uh she's a great champion and uh god i watched something online the other day of her mom who i think was a a judo champion, yeah. I'm not sure. And she was went to uh, watch some fighters, R Ronda and some other fighters, and, mm. you know, uh, spar. And then she talked to them afterwards. She is an intense woman. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you I was so taken by her mother. And, um, but I, I, back, to, back to what you were saying, I'm, I'm looking forward to the uh, cyborg fight with Ronda Rousey. <laughs> Everybody's wondering what's the next step for her. Well, That's Rousey, the only step. Well, well, other other than switch to the men's, I think. That, well, <laughs> she, I, people keep saying that, but I mean, is that really a next step? Is that really a next step? Well, I don't think that's going to happen, but there's no one else that's, that, in my mind, I, and, I, and again, I'm not an MMA fighter, but yeah. aside from Cyborg, I don't know who else could fight her. Well, she's fighting a, a former world boxing champion, Holly Holm, on January 2nd, just announced today. It just announced today. Rousey's last three fights have gone a combined 64 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. It's so good. I mean, it's great when someone like that comes along. It just generates so much excitement. It's incredible. Yeah. So, Johnny, what's next for you? Are you going to do another jackass, another bad grandpa, or something along those lines, or, um, or, or no? Well, Is that in the works? Uh, well, the, it's possible, but we're, we're not planning on one of either of those right now, but I always still write ideas for jackass. If I have a bad idea, I always write it down. <laughs> bad idea. We've written, like, 70 since the last... Uh, uh -huh. um, but uh, I am gearing up to do another film, and it's going to hurt. It's a scripted movie, but, uh, you know, we're going to have the stunts be uh, wide angle, no cuts. So When does that come out? When do you start shooting that? Well, we're trying to hopefully, you know, sometime this year or early next. What do, what do your loved ones say to you, Johnny, when you, before you go out to do something like this? Um, they like the prank side. You know, <laughs> my, my, my mom and dad, my wife and, mm -hmm. you know, sister, they don't. And I understand. Sure. Uh, but, uh, you know, <laughs> it is what Should it is. Should have went to college. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last question for you, Johnny. What would, uh, Evil Knievel think of this documentary, do you think? Since he's been known to take a baseball bat to people who he did not like what they were doing about him on yeah. his behalf. What do you think Evil Knievel would think about this? That's a fair question. I don't think he would be happy with it because, like I said earlier, we were honest about who he was as a person, mm -hmm. and since there were some unflattering things in there, uh, I think he's going to be, he would be very upset. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's just how he was. Well, it's a fun documentary, Johnny. It really is. It's, it, it, it is just a fun watch. And I know you said it is warts and all, and there are some very sad parts to it, 
But it was just, you know, I don't remember the last time that I saw some of this footage. And Johnny Carson essentially starts it. You know, I mean, it's just a different time, a different era, and it was a new yeah. walk down memory lane. He's the perfect man for the perfect time, coming out of the toughness of the 60s, and here mm -hmm. this guy comes out of Butte, Montana, and he's uh, in the red, white, and blue. Yeah, uh, just, like, just like, as you said, a superhero in a yeah. way. But uh, in, in many ways, he was not. But uh, if, and if it brought on, as you say, uh, stuff that you have done, then uh, I'm more thrilled about Evil Knievel's existence than ever before. Good to see you, Johnny. Good to see you. You bet. Johnny Knoxville Thank is you. here at uh, Real J Knoxville on Twitter. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.